most admirable chasers you could possibly wish to see. Good afternoon and welcome to the Race Hour podcast, kindly sponsored by Bet UK and in association with Gambling.com. I'm Darren Hughes and I'm managed to rest back the host chair from an emboldened Stephen Casson. Delighted to say we have an exciting weekend's racing lying in store from far-flung places such as Ascot and Wincanton and Haydock and all sorts. Uh, but first, do allow me please to introduce my panel of guests. And first up, as always, is Jermot Nolan. How are we, Jermot? All good. All good, Darren. Good to have you back. It was a bloody battle, but you got there in the end. You got it back off Cass anyway, fair play. Yeah, Cass's Kat, uh, decapitated head is on the, is on a spike out the front garden here at Longford <laughs> at the moment. Should we, I'll send a picture in to you later on. Uh, I also have Key and Kirby in tow. How are things, Key and Cheltenham, when you're around the corner? Yeah, very good. Thanks, Darren. Yeah, just less less than a month to go till uh, Cheltenham now, so really looking forward to the action. Hundred percent, yeah, yeah. It's 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 been an okay season, but it, it, no matter what, uh, the closer it gets to to Cheltenham week, it's it's hard not to get excited. Uh, and last but certainly not least, a race hour virgin, uh, not the first one of those as <laughs> you, uh, in the shape of Barry Doyle from Champ an experienced broadcaster and a top judge in his own right. How's all on your end, Barry? Brilliant, Darren. Sure, long time listener of the show and a good friend of Dermot as well. So brilliant to be on, and uh, you do great work. And we're, I suppose, we're building up now, aren't we? Less than four weeks to the Cheltenham Festival. We lots happening this weekend, and yeah, really looking forward to. I suppose Gorham Park as well. The entries were out for the uh, the Red Mills Chase and Hurdle as well. So might touch upon that at the end, but it's uh, going to be an exciting weekend again, and brilliant to be on with you. Absolutely, please God. Uh, we've managed to rob firstly Ronan Groom and now yourself from the, the Road to Cheltenham Challenge podcast. So uh, it's great to see a little bit of collaboration in the industry. So we're, we're all enthusiasts, really. Uh, and with that, anyway, we'll move into the weekend preview. As as, Ro- as Barry said, we will touch on Goran at some stage, but we'll start off with the ITV races for now, anyway. And the first one of those is the 150 Ascot. It's the Reynoldstown Chase over three miles. And it's a tricky race. And because of that, I'm going to kick it straight to you, Barry. Apple away heads the market. She's in receipt of a fair bit of weight. But she has been smacked at this level before. It's not the strongest race of the grade, maybe. Did you, did you come down in the selection? Well, I suppose when you look at a race like this, the first thing I'd look to see, uh, Darren, is how many how many can't win. And I think all probably have you could make some sort of case for for each of the five of them. The race has cut up a little bit, but Apple away, I think, um, on all known form, obviously she's a grade one winner over hurdles, Darren, and um, she was very good at entry last year. But I suppose over fences, she jumps quite nice. So we had um, you mentioned the Champ that podcast. We we managed to to get the Sligo man Derek Fox on uh, earlier on in the year. And he did say like that, well, the words he used was, this is this is the real deal. And if she is, she should be winning a race like this. Um, she disappointed, I'd say slightly. Um, she was very keen in, in, in the race there at Warwick um, in graded company. Obviously the winner, Grey Dawn, went on to win on her last start, but she'd been uh, jumping lovely. I thought she made a, you know two really good performances over fences prior uh, to her Warwick run. And uh, I suppose on rating, she's well in here. My big question would be, are they looking at the ultimate for her? I'm obviously, Connections won the race uh, with Cora Grambler a couple of years ago, and I got my fingers burnt a couple of years ago as well with Cora Grambler in this exact race. He was going well, I suppose, when he fell. We never knew would have know what, what would have happened if he'd have stayed on his feet in the Reynolds Town. But um, for that reason, I suppose, is this D-Day? I'm not entirely sure. So I think uh, one horse that it will be D-Day for is uh, Henry's friend, who's done a hat-trick. I think I saw a price of six to one chalked up about Henry's friend. And Ben Pauling, look, is uh, stable as in crack and form. He's some lovely young horses. But this is the lowest rated of the field over hurdles. But I wouldn't say he'll be the lowest rated over fences. He's going in the right direction. He jumps well. And his form and gallop and tracks as well. I mean, he's won at Doncaster and Newbury on, you know, big, uh, stiff fences, obviously, at both courses. And, um, you know, gallop and track seem to suit him. So I'd say the course will be fine. But the key thing with him is he's stepping up and trip three furlongs. He was idling badly, I thought, when winning uh, last time out at Hereford. And so I just wonder what Apple away and Brave uh, Kingdom in the race could say uh, they cut each other's throats and could it set up for the likes of Henry's friends. So six to one, he's not out of it. The pace battle predicted by Barry Doyle uh, and he's hoping Henry's friend might pick up five to one with our sponsors, Bet UK, uh, our first time cheek pieces at Ask at the weekend. Uh, do you agree with Barry Dermot or are, are you siding with the favourite Apple away who's 11 to 8 with our sponsors currently? No, I'm kind of happy to take her on because I do think something like an Ultima will really suit her. She's a, she's a beautiful leper. Um, she's long term one that I I think could go well next season, maybe in a Grand National or one of the nationals like that. He, even an Irish national could, could really suit her. Um, she really jumps very well. I thought the bubble was somewhat burst last time as far as her being top, top graded mayor. I think she, she'll she win plenty, but I don't know. 
Grey Dawning's very, very good, but he really hooked her out of the way now last time. And it's um, this to me now would scream maybe as a bit of a retrieval mission on towards something like the festival. But in either case, um, the, the aforementioned Brave Kingdom there, that win last time was actually quite good because the second pulling stumps, he was going to win next time. I think he was he was well clear with, with the winner on the day, but I do think that he was going to go very, very close. And then when you're looking onwards, then again, the horse in third, Theatre Man, was good enough to finish second behind Ginny's Destiny last time, finishing ahead of the likes of Ed's Perfecto. Uh, Brave Kingdom won with a, a bit snugly more than what it looked. And um, he's here. Paul Nichols tends to mop up these kind of weekends. This is when his horses are really flying because, you know, he he can give the kind of, he can give the likes of a Cheltenham Festival a, a bit of a wide berth overall. He tends to really mop up these weekends. So I do think Brave Kingdom, I really like him here. Uh, his form is starting to really back up and while he does have to give weight to Apple away I do think this is more of his target as Barry alluded to as well there so I do think Brave Kingdom for me looks a very decent bet here I am I am on mute I'll have to call myself out on that one uh, Brave Kingdom for Dermo Nolan <laughs> 10 to 3 with our sponsors Bet UK so it's Brave Kingdom for Dermo it's uh, Henry's friend for Barry what say you Keen Kirby yeah, I'm going to be against the the, the favourite here as well, Darren. I mean, she's ran three times this season. She's won once, but she's she's been well beaten the other two on the other two occasions. Um, but was a fan of Kill by King last year, but you have to say he's been disappointing over fences. He's been beaten by wide margins in all three starts this season. I know last time was a a Grade One company against La France, but I I'd be in agreement with Dermo here. I think uh, Brave Brave Kingdom is is the bet in the race. I'm surprised he's as big as. At seven to two, I think that's a very generous price. Um, you could tell Paul Nichols will have this race earmarked for him from his last run. Yeah, I presume he won't be going to Cheltenham. This this will be his uh his his gold cup, and I think uh I think he can definitely give the favourite loss. Think about it. it'll be classic. Uh, Nichols Cobden from the front at Ascot. I could see it going pillar to post, I and mean, if he gets into a good rhythm out in front, it'll be difficult to take back. Two votes for Brave Kingdom. For what it's worth, I thought Brave Kingdom had pretty strong claims in this as well. Uh, I'm going to stick with you, Key, and when we head down down northwest, I'm not sure to win Canton for the King Kingwell Hurdle over two miles. Past winner Goshen comes here out of form uh, with the likes of Rubo, Colonel Mustard, and Amian Line ahead of him in the market. It's a competitive affair. Were you able to, to find the winner? Yeah, this race had a, a very different look to it. Um... When it was Andy Post, I think Rubot was a, a shade of odds on or around even money, and you can get as big as five to two now. I, th I think that's uh, that's way too big a price. I'm not sure what price it will go off, but I, I can't see it can't see it going off uh, five to two. I mean, you look at Guard Your Dreams, Goshen, you don't know what you're going to get out of the two of them. Um, I think the Me and Lion had multiple entries over the weekend. He, he seems like a horse that they don't know what his best trip was. I think he could be. This is over one mile seven. I think he was entered over two and a half miles. Uh, he could even be a three mile. I don't think he'd have the toe for this. Um, Rubo won over a course and distance at the start of the season. Um, I think, yeah, five to two is is, uh, is a serious price considering he was odds on in the anti-post market. Um, I don't I don't understand that price. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a very fair price. And yeah, he'd be the pick for me here. The value of five to two for Key and Kirby. Uh, Barry Doyle, I'm going to come to you next. Did you see the race the same way? I did. I thought exactly the same way. And I thought five to two, look, best industry price at the moment. Uh, look, Paul Nichols, I think Dermot mentioned that this is the time of year his forms, his uh, stable really starts to hit a bit of form. He's obviously uh, one of two course and distance winners in the lineup, uh, Ruball. He's uh, the youngest in the lineup. Colonel Harry, or Colonel Mustard, should I say, uh, obviously the second favourite for Lorna Fowler. That was entered in the Red Mills hurdle. I thought it might go there. It's interesting, Daryl Jacob was jocked up for the ride, but just hates winning, doesn't it? Colonel Mustard, second uh, on three of its last five starts. And uh, obviously its back form is decent. It was I think it was third, was it? Or second in a in a county hurdle. That's uh, Cheltenham on good to soft ground behind uh, Staple. Only beat three lengths. And he repeated that sort of form and it'd have to have a big chance here, but I, I don't know if this horse is progressing still. It's nine years of age. Uh, gets a bit of weight off Rubal, but again, the pace angle here, if Rubal gets his own way in front, again, it's only a six-year-old. It's obviously dropping down. Uh, Darren, plenty in class here, was beaten 11 lengths by Lossy Mountain, nine and a half lengths by Constitution, hit on its start prior to that. It's a winner at Wink Canton from three starts ago. And uh, look, I'd say there'd be plenty of horses in this division beating 11 lengths by Lossy Mount and nine and a half lengths by Constitution Hill. It's the drop in class for me, it's, which is why I'm siding with Rubold. But I think the biggest danger is in the main line. 
Rubo for Barry Doyle, the biggest stranger in the main line. Uh, I would I should say our sponsors, Bet UK, are industry best price in Colonel Mustard, 11 to 4. They are Duck and Rubo very slightly at 13 to 8. I think they've, they've taken the same line as the two lads. For what it's worth, I thought the 13 pound swing with Colonel Mustard and Rubo would be enough to make up for the three lengths that separated them the last time they met. Dermot Nolan, what say you? Yeah, no, I agree completely. Um, I like. Colonel Mustard a lot here. I don't think Rubo handles soft ground that well, so that's why I think the price has started to drift. He's he's kind of been beaten the last few times now where he's he's faced soft ground. You can see why they are running here because there isn't a whole pile of options for a horse like him, but I do think soft ground will will find him out. There is only three lengths between them. And Colonel Mustard, he also boasts some very strong farmers, Barry alluded to there also. His his run behind State Man at Punchdown last year as well. He, he's got plenty of it. His chase form wasn't terrible by any means at all. He just wasn't a complete natural too. He probably started a bit too late. So back over hurdles here. Daryl Jacob um, jocked up. The ground's more in his favour than the favourite. Not that neither of them really wanted, but Colonel Mustard has done winning on, on soft ground. And soft the Galway is definitely softer than Wade Canton as well. So I'd say he'll he'll have no problem handling it. So yeah, no, at the odds, Darren, I, I was quite keen now on, uh, on Colonel Mustard. Quite keen and Colonel Mustard, that makes two of us. We're going to head back to Ascot now, Dermot. I'm going to stick with you for this. It's the Thoroughbred Industry Employee Awards Handicap Hurdle over two miles and three furlongs. Lamilas is keeping the weights down ahead of what is an expected Grand National uh, bid, I would say. Rare Edition looks to back up his Kemp to win. I know you were very fond of him the time before last that he ran, Dermot. Same as myself. Very tricky race. How do you see it going? Yeah, there would. A rare addition there now. If you miss the wedding, you don't want to go to the funeral. So I, I, I'll leave him alone. Um, but I do really, really like the Harry Durham horse. Um, here I sorry, I completely forget his name. My head is absolutely rattled. Um, I really like Monville here. I think he he should go very well. Big fan of the trainer Harry Durham. Uh, mark one hundred twenty eight with the natural improvement that Harry Durham has been getting out of his hurdlers and all the horses that he's been getting so far. This really should should suit him. His chasing career started quite well, actually. He didn't jump great, but he was close enough now behind JPR1, who's a very smart one. And then last time, it just completely went asunder. They are right to be drawing up stumps now with him and to be going back over hurdles with him. But a mark of 128 really does somewhat underestimate him, I think. And uh, now he's been beaten off that mark when with Philip Hobbs. But I think Harry Durham has just been improving every single horse that he's got so far. So a mark of 128 here for him and him and Paul O'Brien just screams to me as being a decent one, particularly just based off that chasing form as well behind JPR1. He hit every fence that day and still looked like he was going to trouble that horse. And JPR1 is a sneaky outsider, smart man's bet for the Arkle. So this horse here in a handicap like this up 128, um, if he can leave those chasing <coughs> exertions behind him, I do think that he's a decent bet here, Darren, yeah. Monviel for German Oldman. I should just add that our sponsors bet you care playing an extra place in this race. So it's five places uh, in the handicap hurdle at Asco, whose name I have already forgotten. Uh, Barry Doyle, I'm going to come back to you uh, for this race at Asco. Did you have a selection for us? Well, promise me for not to, to not kick me off the podcast when I put this one forward. But Teddy Blue um, is a horse that um, it was interesting. No, David Jennings is a good friend of the show as well and just beyond with you lads. And I think he was quite keen on the chances at uh, Kempton of uh, Teddy Blue in a class two a handicap hurdle over two and a half miles when last seen. And I think the angle with Teddy Blue the last time, uh, certainly, uh, as David was telling me, anyway, it was a step up and trip uh, to two mile and five furlongs. But it's, I thought it's shaped. I thought it was a real eye catcher in the run, swinging in, went off a massive price at Kempton uh, last time. The key to this horse is good ground, likes to be held up, and needs a strong pace to aim at. It'll get that here. And uh, was sixth of 19 runners. Um, wasn't beaten all that far in the end uh, at Kempton last time. And I think uh, stepping back and trip two furlongs here. In a race that he's going to get plenty of uh, pace to, to to aim at. Uh, look, Gary Moore's horses as well. I think it's worth mentioning. He's had a winner uh, every day for the last, uh, well, he's had seven winners in the last week, basically. So uh, st stable, really in form at the moment. 25% uh, strike rate. Tom Cannon's an interesting jockey booking. And uh, last time, did have the cheek pieces on for the first time. Now it has the tongue strap on as well. I'm not sure whether that's a, a positive or negative. But look, some change of headgear there. I thought it shaped quite nice in the race last time. I think the step back and trip just two furlongs could suit. So, look, you're getting a double figure price. It's a race. I think you can find one in 12 to 1 each way. That'll do for me in this. 
Teddy Blue for the informed Gary Murray. Uh, of course, uh, son Jamie retired today after a bad fall in November. So they'll be hoping to get things back on track. But as you say, they are absolutely flying it down in Sussex at the moment. And Key and Kirby, I'm going to come to you last of all this race in Ascot. Did you have a selection for us? Yeah, this is wide open. I think they're betting six to one the field. So I'll be taking a, I'll be taking a punt on a on an outsider here uh, as an each way pick. And the one I like is the Dan Skelton trained Santos Blue at sixteen to one. If you look back through his form, he, he, even last season he was only just touched off by Broadway Boy. Then his first run this season, he was only just beaten by Crambo. I mean, that's that's a very strong form. Then he was second at Weatherby. And went one better by winning at that track next time out. I just thought 16 to 1. Dan Skelton usually targets these um, handicap hurdles. I could see him going off a lot shorter than that. And I was surprised he was 16 to 1. So, as an each way uh, pick against the field, uh, he'll do for me. An each way pick against the field for Key and Kirby taking a bit of a swing in a large field handicap hurdle. Makes sense to me. Uh, Barry, I'm going to come back to you. We're heading north to head off for the first time today. For the Virgin Bet Rendlesham hurdle over three miles and a half furlong. Uh, Botox has heads the market here ahead of the likes of Butch and Red Risk. It's, an, it's another open affair. Did you have a selection for us? Well, Red Risk is the one based on ratings and sound rushing that could be potentially well in. It looks, looks uh, open enough now. You could make a case for plenty of these. Obviously, we have uh, the uh, six runners declared. We're going to be really testing ground. But I'm going to stick with my old friend here, Darren Butch, who um, look has had his problems. I think Ollie Murphy has uh, you know made it known how you know how high, highly he has regarded this horse uh, over the years. But uh, I like its form on heavy ground. Obviously, uh, last time out it was coming off the back of a 65 day absence after winning at uh, Cheltenham on good to soft ground, but proved its versatility. I think on on heavy ground. I thought one with plenty in hand and was idling at the finish really at uh, Cheltenham on heavy ground when last seen. Now Cheltenham heavy ground is going to be much different uh, to Haydock heavy ground. I think that's probably fair to say. But uh, what I like about this horse, I think. The step up and trip to this season has been key for him. And uh, obviously he's got a, Ollie Murphy's got a cleaner run of health with the horse. I think he had ulcers or some sort of an issue, not like that, not nothing too serious. But uh, if you look at this seven-year-old, I mean, he's only had seven starts over hurdle. His record's actually quite good. He's won four from seven. He's only been out of the frame on one uh, of those. Uh, he's only been out of the places on one of those uh, seven starts. So he's actually... He's a horse that's still open to, to much more improvement. Ollie Murphy, we mentioned the stable form of Paul Nichols, Gary Moore. Ollie Murphy's not doing too bad. 35% at the moment. Eight winners from his last 23. Um, the race could be run to suit as well. Sean Bone on board. I thought 9-4 to four, probably looked the most solid, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be an extremely a strong pick because I think uh, the likes of Botox has, Red Risk and Sound Russian in particular on ratings look to be well treated by race conditions. Fair comments there from Barry Doyle. Yeah, Butch, they do look to have got a, a bit of a run with them and you never know where, where the, the improvement will stop with these types uh, when they do actually get on a bit of a roll. 9-4 to four with our sponsors, Bet UK. Dermot, I'm going to come back to you. Uh, they're ending some hurdle in Haydock. Where did you see this race going? Yeah, it won't be a bet really for me, but I agree completely with Ronan there. Or uh, with Barry there, sorry. The, um, Ronan, wherever that came from. I, I completely agree with Barry. Jeez, don't, um, don't, don't, um, don't christen me with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is because we have a listener that I met at Leprosome called Ronan Doyle. I think that's where it's from. But um, Barry Doyle, um, I agree completely there. I, I think Botox has in red risk. We know where we stand with them. If there's one horse that could improve and be something a bit better, it is Butch. Now, now that they've got a run, now that Ollie Murphy's flying, he'd be the one that I'd pick, but I doubt I'd have a bet in this race there. A tentative selection for Butch from Dermot Ullis. That's two for two. Kean, I'm going to close out with you. Did you have a selection in this race? Yeah, it's going to complete the hat trick with Butch. Um, not much more than what the lads have said already. But I mean, he's he's the only horse with a bit of upsides uh, to him, Darren. He's the youngest horse in the race. He's won tr three on the spin, four of his last five. He should handle the conditions. I wouldn't be surprised to see him being punted into favourite now. I think Botox has, when you look at his form, he only has one good run in his last five. Sounds of Russian would probably need the run, was running a scream in the Gold Cup. Um, the two rags I can't see then getting into it. Red risk, difficult horse to predict. I think the I think he's top price eleven to four at the moment. I could see him going off about seven to four, and um I think he'll win it, yeah. Three for three from for Butch from the lads on the panel was for what it's worth, I thought he had a very strong claims in this also. If there's one horse in the race that's still improving, 
it's probably him. Uh, Kian, I am going to stick with you for the Swinley Handicap Chase at Ascot. It's three o'clock. Uh, and I suppose my first question for you is, can Shan Blue get his career back on track here? Uh, the market hasn't missed Victorino, who sh- should be more suited by this trip than the sharper two and a half miles of Cheltenham last time. But surely Shan Blue is the one of interest here um, with a bit of a class edge maybe over the field. Yeah, we know Keen <laughs> Harms on that podcast. He'd be, uh, he'd be banging on the, sh- the Shan Blue drum. He absolutely loves that horse. And I'm sure we'll touch uh, Gosh Goshen's out as well this weekend. So there's two D- Dean Ryan tips to keep an eye on. Um, but no, he's he's not for me now. He's a 10-year-old. Uh, he's been pulled up in three of his last four starts. Um, personally, wouldn't wouldn't back it. I was all over Victorino um, last time out of Cheltenham as well. It disappointed, was very well backed. But I'm going to give it a second chance here. I think the step up and trip will, will suit. I do think it's a better horse than uh, 146. I think it could definitely uh 150 plus horse. Um, seven to two is is tight enough now. It was I think it was five or six to one anti post, but uh I think that has a lot of progression and it's only a six year old. Um, we love the conditions and I think I think it'll it'll bounce back from that uh, defeat of Chatham last time out. Bounce back for Victorino for Kean Kirby. Uh, Barry, I'm going to come to you next to you, seeing the race going the same way as Kean. Completely different. It's my best bet at the weekend, Shan Blue. You might think I'm absolutely stone mad, but um, I loved his run last time over a trip. Uh, plenty uh, short. Is my mute? I'm, I'm on, I thought it was on mute. Um, yeah, I loved his run last time. Obviously, the form has worked out with the uh, finished third, obviously, behind triple trade, uh, Shan Blue. He's not getting any younger, as mentioned, 10 years of age now. But he's had two gent. I know he was pulled up on two of his, you know, two of his three starts over fences this year. But the skeleton runners were running desperate, weren't they, at the start of the year? And the signs of life with the yard as well. Uh, two winners in two seconds in the last uh, in, in this in, in the last couple of days alone. Uh, and Shan Blue, obviously, look at the second uh, in that uh, the second in the race, obviously, Shan Blue finished third uh, at Ascot back on the 23rd of December. But look at the second, Harper's Brook has since come out and franked the form uh, over a shorter trip by seven and a half lengths. I loved what he was doing late in the run. Thought he jumped better last time at uh, Ascot over the course. And I loved, I loved in particular how he stayed to the line. It was a trip plenty short for him. And he's nine pounds lower, Darren. Uh, than his last winning mark over fences. So there's every possibility that he could be well treated. He's certainly been backed uh, like they, they, they fancy him to run well here. I think he's halved in price, six to one from 12s. Um, and I just think, I like the form, as I say, of that last uh, last run over a trip plenty short. The ground as well. Uh, three of his uh, victories in his career has come on good to soft ground. So I think uh, even by Shantou, the ground drying out is not going to be a hindrance to him. And so you say he's 10 years of age. He's only had 12 starts over fences. So it's uh, he's not overly raced, you know. And uh, the skeleton yard could just be starting to hit a bit of form. Looking at the race as a whole, obviously, three under, true five will carry a big weight once again here. The wind up has definitely made a difference uh, for him. He's run two absolute crackers. And you'd imagine he's going to go close here and could have an easy time uh, up front in terms of uh, that airy pace. He likes to go forward and Harry Cobden on board. But uh, Iron Bridge, he's doubly declared. I'd imagine he'd go to Haydock. We'll come on to that race in a couple of moments. And there's not too many in here uh, that uh, I see winning the race. Uh, so I keep coming back to Shan Blue. Best bet of uh, certainly the Ascot card this weekend. Managed to spoil your nap there, Barry. Thanks very much for that. We usually save those for the end of the show. Clearly, you don't watch us every week. That's okay. We'll let you away with that. <laughs> uh, you're going You're going with the class edge, Sham Blue. Dermot Nolan, do you agree with Barry or what way did you see the race going? I agree with Keane, actually. Um, as I, I find it hard to trust Sham Blue, as talented as he is. He, he was a horse that, that, that really promised an awful lot and just never quite got there. He had a bad fall once or twice. So that definitely had his chance here. But to me, Victorino just hated every minute of Cheltenham last time and... and Charlie Dice minded him accordingly. If you watch him from three out, Charlie Dice starts to realise that this horse, it wasn't handling the undulations of Presbury Park at all, at all. And before that, though, his runs were just outstanding. Only went up four pounds for that last win when he held off Yeman, who, who we'll talk about shortly. And it's for me, that's quite decent form as much as Yeman is definitely a twicer. Uh, he's still a talented horse. And Victorino beat him, had that race won by that point. Um, he's a horse who's who's clearly improving, was looked after for what was a race that just didn't happen for him last time at all. Back at Ascot where he's proven he acts already. Yeah, I could see this horse running in something like an Ascot chase next season on this card. Not exactly getting involved maybe, but you know, he, I think he will progress 
to that level. He's a very talented racehorse and uh, seven to two, definitely skinny enough, but it's just about backable. And um, I'm quite confident in him there. He'll drift on the morning off. I'd be pretty confident of that. He's that type of horse that's going to be well back during the week and I, I could see him being available at 9 to 5 to 1 in the morning of the race. No bother at all. Dermot, I'm going to stick with you. 3.15 at Haydar at the Grand National Trial. Gavin Cromwell has attempted another UK raid with Jam Man, but he does face a stiff enough task in the home team. Uh, how did you see this runner? Yeah, Darren, this is one hell of a race. Absolutely stacked. Um, Always just such a hard race to get. The horse really have, horses really have to be made of steel. Uh, I am actually back in the Gavin Cromwell horse here. Uh, yeah, man. I think um, that run last time behind Victorino was a real eye catcher. He just looked... I wonder if he's one of these horses, maybe a bit of Sky Pirate about him, where he's running big races, looks like he's never going to win a race. And then when they put him right out and trip... Sorry, the opposite to it, a Sky Pirate, because Sky Pirate was obviously way out and trip and came back. But I wonder if he's the opposite to that, because... Yeah, man, last time at Ascot, that was a real staying performance. The race went wrong for him and he completely stayed on very well uh, behind the aforementioned Victorino. And he's a horse that just seems to always be staying on. Now, he could do that again because he, he doesn't win a whole pile, but he's he is quite talented. And um, I do I do fancy him here. And he's a very, very decent price. He seems to always be rock solid for each way money at the very least. And I'm wondering if a real extreme conditions and an extreme race could maybe unlock him enough that he he might finally win a race. Interesting shout there from Dermot Nolan. Uh, Sky Pirate, I think many will remember him as uh, one of the biggest plot jobs of all time when they did they eventually figure him out. But he let a lot of people down along the way. Uh, Barry, I am going to come to you next to this Grand National Trial in Haydock. Are you sticking with the Irish or are you going for the home team? We'll go with the the John Joe Neal team, whatever that whether that's Irish or English. <laughs> uh, Iron Bridge um is the one I like here. And so uh, the Hemmings uh, obviously ownership have the uh, front and second in the market at the moment. Dickie Richards uh, horses as well. They all seem to be flying at the moment, and every every trainer we're mentioning, but um Iron Bridge for John Joe Neal. He's only had 10 starts in his life. He's a horse I've always liked, even back to uh, of course his win. Uh, Car- Carlisle is a novice uh, chaser uh, that was on good to soft ground but he's very versatile I think he's a better horse as well on on more testing ground as well this uh, son of Milan he's only 8 years of age um, jumps nicely and I like this run I have to say in the, in, in the Welsh National obviously the the, 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 the second and third who obviously also re opposes here. I will do it for Sam Thomas uh, in the Welsh National, the second and third. I thought, uh, look, they just ran into one, Nassalam. You weren't beaten. There was no horse um, beating beaten that horse on that particular day. He was absolutely brilliant. Uh, I will do it as on uh, better terms. I think two pounds better terms with uh, Iron Bridge, but I just think Iron Bridge has so much you know, more room for improvement. Everything is in his favour here. He's unbeaten at the track, although he's only had one start, uh, to be fair, but he's won over the course and he's unbeaten on this type of ground as well. He gets weight off the top weight here, plenty of it as well, um, eight pounds in total. Uh, to, to me, he's the one to be with. He's doubly declared. I, I, I'd i imagine this is definitely the target for him and he'd have to be player for uh, so the likes of the, the Grand National afterwards uh, should he go and, and be impressive here I thought there was a lot to like and look at the moment I'm seeing best price 11-2 to two. I wouldn't say you'll see that in the day Iron Bridge Barry Doyle I expect uh, same as yourself Barry I, I think this will be his first port call it's only just in case something mad does happen and Hayda might get rained off he is a 92 poke with our sponsors who are ducking him Ever so slightly, uh, Kian, I am going to come to you last of all here for the Grand National Trial. A very, very tricky affair. Did you manage to find one? Yeah, I'm gonna gonna go with Dermot here. Obviously, we both fancy that Victorino. So if you like Victorino, you kind of have to fancy. Uh, have to fancy. Yeah, man. I mean, Gavin Cromwell's hardly bringing him over for the crack. I think that is is a very strong piece of form behind Victorino. I do, I do think he's a he's a very talented horse. He should have handled the conditions. Um, eight to one is is a decent price, but it's uh, it's a wide open race. I wouldn't be mad keen it, but he'd be the pick for me here. Double double up for the the Irish team for the the two lads. Uh, Key and I'm going to stick with you for our final race on the ITV card. Uh, probably the highlight of the day. It's the Betfair Ascot Chase. Long press is eight to eleven here to back up his promising comeback at Lingfield. Course specialist pick Dorhy second fab at nine to four and perpetually too short in the market at high senior is in here at five to one uh what way did you see this going yeah it's it's an interesting race this um i mean long price obviously heads to market he was he was good good last last time out at linkfield but you'd probably say protector at um 
let, let the form a bit, a bit down in the Shishkin race last weekend. Um, there is also the bounce factor to, to consider. Um, that was his first run in a long time. And also a big thing about Lampress is he's a better horse going left-handed. If you go back to the King George last year against Brave Man Gain, uh, he was jumping left at uh, all his obstacles. So I think taking into account he's better horse going the other way around, the bounce factor, I think at um, four to six he is. I think he's... Uh, He's worth opposing at that price. Um, sail away uh, looks to right field, no chance. A hoy senor is an interesting horse. I mean, his his form is pretty weak, but um, the last time out in the Cotswolds chase, I think he was trading at just around a shade of odds on before the um, the saddle slipped or, or snapped or something like that. So he's a horse that comes into his into his own in the spring. But it's difficult to know what you're going to get out of him. Um, I think just the rock solid pick has to be um, picked over here. He absolutely loves Ascot. He won't be going for Cheltenham. This will be his Gold Cup. Um, probably would have beaten Brand Banbridge last <clears> time out if he if he jumped the last, and then prior to that he won the race at Ascot, where Shish Shishkin didn't um, refuse to race. Um, in this race last year, he was second to Shishkin. Like we know what Shishkin's like on a going day, he's basically unbeatable. So I think yeah, around um, around nine to four, like Harry Cobden's going going to Ascot um, over Haydock. I think that's a tip tip in itself, and I think he can uh, he can shake up the favourite here. Picked already to overturn the odds and favourite Long Press for Keen Kirby. Uh, Barry, I'll come to you next. Do you fancy the course specialist to upset the odds on favourite as well? No, I'd say it'll be. The early exchanges will be interesting here. And I like the angle with a high senior who is stepping back and tripping. Lucinda Russell, I mean, she's so bullish, isn't she? That's fighting talk from her that, you know, you're going to see the real high senior, um, you know, and, you know, this this weekend. I mean, just back to the, the interview that I did with Derek Fox earlier on in the season, he did say there was genuine excuses for, um, you know, a high seniors runs earlier on in the season. The battle for the lead early is going to be uh, crucial here, as it so often is in this particular race, uh, the Ascot chase. And I just like the, the stepping back and trip angle. If he can bully his way to the front early, a high senior, he's always jumped uh, better uh, going right-handed, even though most of his best form on paper is uh, going left-handed, but he's always jumped right. So I think Ascot will suit him. And big gallop and track like this, Lucinda's horse is running well. If he can... Um, you know, win out uh, that early battle with Pick Dory here. I'd imagine Lahan Press will sit in behind. Uh, the bounce factor would have to be a worry uh, with it with uh, Lahan Press. And personally, I don't see him as a Gold Cup contender. Um, you know, there was a long, long layoff as well. He's reappeared 27 days afterwards. You know, he won quite snug in fairness. Uh, beat Protector up by two and a half lengths, obviously at Linkfield on that reappearance. But Phoenicia Williams, horse, and other lads were mentioned, Victorino. I mean, she's had one winner in her last 21. The stable would have to form, would have to be a worry for me. And uh, the ground the ground drying out as well. Also, I'd, I'd, I'd share the concerns there. So a high senior, I think two and a half miles. He has to be a player here. There's only seven pounds in the difference between the two of them. And if he can bully his way to the front early, he's an ignorant sort and it, it will take a good one to pass him with, sir. Hi, senor, for Barry Doyle. Uh, happy to take the five to one about the son of Dylan Thomas. And Dermot Nolan, I'm going to come to you last of all. What way do you see this race unfolding? Uh, I don't really have any opinion on it. I, I kind of went around around in my head all day with it. Um, not all day. I, I, not that sad. With the last half an hour or so. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh... You are married with children, Dermot. Do you know what I mean? I do, yeah. I've got enough. <laughs> I got enough going on there without going going over this race in my head all day. Uh, but um, yeah, long press dropping back and trip that's problematic. I struggle with a high senior. I, I don't see what he's done to warrant the the kind of fan club he has. Uh, Pick Dory is definitely the solid one, but I I don't know how good he is. So it's a race, Darren. I'll sit down and watch, but I have no interest in uh, in punting on it. Damn squib to finish it off from Dermot Nolan. Uh, didn't expect that one. So that's the ITV race cars uh, done and dusted, lads. I'm going to come to each one of you for one more. And we also have a special selection from Barry Doyle in each way double for the festival. And after that, then I get the, the naps from each of the lads, even though Barry's already given his away somewhat. Uh, Dermot, <laughs> do you have anything else for the, the rest of the weekend for us? On the Red Mills card, as Barry mentioned, Earlier on, grey card altogether, but the um the 4.35 at Coburn Park, we're going back in time, lads. I'm tipping up a Robert Tyner horse, which we haven't done on this podcast for uh, quite a while. But uh, better times ahead there now. 4.35 hasn't been seen since winning at uh, Navin last March, uh, Darren. 
and beat that day Goland uh, Vuzel uh, of uh, Philip Rotwell's. That horse has gone on a run since and is now 14 pounds higher. Uh, this horse beat beat him quite easy now on the day. Very, very easy. And better times ahead went up 12 pounds. But just with that form and how it's looking now, uh, he gave him three pounds that day. 12 pounds mightn't be enough to actually stop him now. He'll get his conditions. He's round well here at Goran Park. Before, Mark Walsh is up. Um, Robert Tyner's had a quiet season, but again, he's a very, very small yard now since he retired and then went back in his retirement and came back. So he only has a few horses now. He had a second there uh, yesterday or the day before. And um, this lad, in my opinion, still has a few pounds. I'm, I'm not going to be bullish and say he's very well handicapped, but I don't think he's fully handicapped just yet. And just based off that winning last year, the other mm. horse is rated 14 pounds higher. He only went up 12. I do think that there's another few pounds to go on this lad. This race is really winnable. And just as someone who's followed the Tyner Yard for years, when Mark Walsh gets up on one of their horses, it actually means quite a lot. Generally, you'd see, you know, Simon Torrance or Philip Enright up on, on Tyner's ones. So when Mark, uh, Mark Walsh is on one, generally now it can mean that he's properly, properly fancied. So Mark Walsh here and uh, a better times ahead. Just to go back in time because our listeners haven't had a Robert Tyner tip for me now in about two or three years. And probably rightfully so, but look, Darren, always time to bring back the old classics, you know? Yeah, for sure. Dermot Nolan reading the tea leaves there and the, with, the, with the green and gold. Uh, we'll see how that goes for him. Uh, Kian, I'm going to come to you next. Anything else from the weekend as it approaches? Yeah, I'll just touch on one horse there. A race we didn't uh, pick up was the Albert Bartlett grade two uh, novices hurdle at Haida, uh, the 4.25. There's a horse enter John John Neal trains called Mount Fuji Park. Uh, won a point to point, be wrapped up in May Foss last, and then last time out at Leicester, he uh just cozy enough, just be Alcido, pair pulling 17 lengths clear of the field. He's doubly entered. He's entered in the 425 at Haida and the 410 handicap hurdle at Ascot. I'd be keen on him, whichever race he rocks up in. And then just on the Punches Town on Sunday, there's a novice hurdle at 305, just two horses I'll touch on that are kind of slightly forgotten about. The first is the Willie Mullins train, Tully Hill. Um, he was very good in bumpers last season, didn't show up at Punches Town on his hurdle and debut, but bounced back in style and nace last time out. Uh, he's a bit of a forgotten horse, a lot of ability, and also no flies on him, uh, trained by Ed Edward O'Grady. He won a point-to-point -point beat Django Bay, who obviously went on to win a grade one and was just touched off in the Sydney Banks. Um, he was very impressive at Leopardstown over uh, Christmas in a maiden hurdle. Another form hasn't worked out great with D.B. Cooper in ascending, but uh, both Tully Hill and No Flies on him are slightly um, forgotten about in the novice hurdle divisions. And if one of one of them were to win that race impressively, they could uh, throw their head into the ring for, uh, for Cheltenham. Okay, there's three from Keen Kirby. I will say that Mount Fuji Park at his form uh, boosted yesterday. The horse in fourth high trees and won a, a novice hurdle for Nigel Twist at Davies. I can't remember where he won it off the top of my head. It was high trees and it's the name of the horse. But uh, yeah, a little boost there for the form uh, for that. And Barry, I'm going to come to you last of all. Anything else for the weekend? And then your each way double for Cheltenham and I'll get everyone's naps after that. Yeah, hundred percent, Darren. I thought uh, when Dermot was uh, mentioning green and gold, there he was actually going back down to the homeland, down to Kerry, because uh, T Tom Cooper has a horse running in Gorham Park in the uh, third race on the card. It caught my eye now a couple of times this season, and uh, well, the horse's name is The Art, The Art, and it was uh, a bumper winner on Tiesta's Day last year. And if you look at its career victories today, it's two from five on the race course. Uh, both wins have come on heavy ground. So this is its handicap debut. It's uh, given a mark of 121. Donna Myler knows the horse quite well. He's run him on four of his last five starts. He's only had the five starts on the race course, of course. And uh, I thought this was an interesting runner by uh, one of the sires at the moment, of uh, uh, course. Uh, and uh, look, look, just look at his last run as well. He was, he was a winner at uh, Cork in a maiden hurdle over two miles. He's a really good jumper. Uh, this horse and uh, I thought last time out he might have run into one who'd be high on my list for handicaps at the uh, festival a horse of Gordon Elliott's called Western Fold so he's back down I think uh, well he's in a handicap here obviously but I think he won't be running a, 
against anything of the caliber of Western Fold in here. And yeah, I just thought it was an interesting opening mark. 121 as a course winner and will love the conditions uh, for Tom Cooper, who I think uh, would hold this horse in, in, in high enough regard. So the art, the art is the one in that 252 at Gorn. And I'm very interested in the Red Mills hurdle, uh, Darren, to see how Lady... Uh, Lantry Lady, should I say, runs. It was a course and distance winner again at Gorham Park on its only start on the race course. Absolutely bolted up uh, last year, uh, beaten Silent Approach, who since went on, of course, uh, to win a grade two chase this year uh, for Con O'Keefe. So uh, we haven't seen it since, but the ground again, Gorham Park, typically heavy uh, when it won there. It's obviously a big step up in class, return to the race course. I'm interested to see how it gets on. I'm not saying it's a betting proposition, but I love the comments from Henry the Bromhead after she won uh, at Gorn Park last year on Shamrock Chase Day. So they'd be the ones I'm most interested in. Gorn on Saturday. Can't wait to be down there. It's going to be a great day. And in terms of an each-way double uh, for Cheltenham, uh, Dermot was 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 looking for this. So I suppose the two races, first of all, the, the National Hunt Chase is uh, the race I went for uh, for the first selection and the Albert Barker for the second. And... We'll stick with the National Hunt Chase. I think Salvador Ziggy is a horse that off an official rating, he's 8-1 to one in the betting at the moment. I could see the scope for this horse to to half in price because I think it'll be Gordon Elliott's number one uh, for the race itself. I think uh, Gordon did mention the stable tours, the three-card brag. Has the option, obviously, of the uh, the Irish National. But I love this horse's uh, form. Obviously, was second in the Pertemps last year at Cheltenham and ran into what was an extremely well-handicapped horse, uh, which was Good Time Johnny. So take Good Time Johnny out, and he would have been a good winner of the race. That's decent course form. Jumps well, stays well. Been to America, uh, I suppose, and disappointed. Went off favoured uh, under Jack Kennedy on that occasion. But uh, I think, uh, just speaking to Harry Swan today on the Champ podcast, he, he had said uh, that the horse is in really good form. And look, he's... He ran an absolute cracker in the, in, in the Kerry National. I think that rep, he could potentially be very well in in something like a National Hunt Chase if he repeats or even builds on that performance. So eight to one, I think you'll have in price. Um, and the other one is Lecky Watson. He's not being talked about for the Albert Barker whatsoever. Um, Darren is, is going to kick me out, I think, but it looks things. But um, wasn't mentioned in the Willie Mullins Stable Tours. I love his form. Um, obviously the champion bumper. How many winners has that produced uh, so far this season? I mean, he was running an absolute cracker in the race and arguably was going the best coming to the furlong pole and completely sandwiched out. That's obviously champion bumper form, but he's obviously uh, run second to Slade Steel up at Navin this year and ran a cracker, I thought, in the, um, in the, in the Lawlers and Nace as well. And I'd say on the Friday at Cheltenham, on the new course, with that big, long straight uh, to, to, to aim at, up to three miles, this horse, I like his course form, and I think he'll be bang there. Um, and he's something like 14 to 1. So that's the each way double. And uh, yeah, straight to Cheltenham with Lecky Watson. I think a lot of people were thinking Martin Pipe, but he's going for the Bartlett. Uh, you know, in light of recent, event, recent events, I won't start barking, but uh, that he is an absolute dog. But, um, <laughs> he's, of a course, our, he's an absolute dog, that horse. I, I don't think he has any interest in winning a race myself. But anyway, uh, he's, not, he's not. He's not. He is. He ducks. Lads, he's done it three or four times. He he holds, he cocks his head. He does everything except hit the line. Uh, but but he won, in any did, case, did, did he win a bumper, Darren? At, uh, he won a bumper and was actually thrown out. So he, he actually did win a bumper. I think Lara Byrne was was saying he never won a bumper, but he did win a bumper. He was just thrown out. Yeah. Well, sorry, yeah. He, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't win it, so sorry, he was thrown out. That, that, was actually, that was actually a mad Stewart's... He decision. thinks he did, though. Yeah. He, he thought he won it, so that's all right. Yeah. Jesus, yeah. Yeah, in fairness, you're actually right. He, he shouldn't have been thrown out. I do remember that day. I was surprised by that. Uh, Jamie Codd rode the winner, if I remember right. I can't remember the colours, so. though. If ever um, there's a race tailor-made for a horse, it's the Albert Bartlett for Lecky Watson. He hit the frame. <laughs> I think there's a greyhound race somewhere else in the same even number <laughs> more more than his line. Jesus, uh, I will I will just say before we go to the naps, our sincerest condolences from everyone at the race hour, of course, to uh, to Margaret Mullins and the Mullins family. She was uh, a, a matriarch of probably the most important family in Irish racing at the moment. Uh, some brilliant stories coming out in the last couple of days from her grandsons and her sons and, and all the rest of it. So she'll obviously be sorely missed, but by all accounts, a woman who led an incredible life, uh, full of life right up to the very very end. So. Uh, as I said, sincerest condolences from everyone here at the race hour. Uh, we'll close out the podcast, lads. I'm just going to get everyone's naps before we finish up, and that'll do us then till next week. So, Barry, you already hinted at yours earlier in the podcast. Uh, your nap for the weekend, please. Yeah, Sham Blue. Got to go with that. Sham Blue for Barry Doyle. Uh, Key and Kirby, your nap for the weekend, please. Yeah, the 150 last got to Reynolds Town Novice Chase, uh, Brave Kingdom at 7 to 2.
Royal Kingdom for Key and Kirby at Ascot. Dermot Nolan, your nap for the weekend, please. That was going to be my nap as well, so I'll move on to something else. Just I leave Keen because I'll cheer him home. Uh, Colonel Mustard in the 205 uh, a wing canton. Both, both of you have taken my first and second option, so I'm not, I'm not going to go for a third. And I'm going to row in behind you, Darma. I think Colonel Mustard is a, is a brilliant price uh, at his available odds. Okay, that's us for this week, folks. Thanks for listening to this week's Race Hour, uh, kindly sponsored by Bet UK and in association with gambling.com. We'll be back on Monday to review the week's action. So until then, gamble responsibly, be lucky, and we will chat to you very soon. Relentless, remorseless, and pounding towards that star into submission.